CNN reporter Danielle Sullivan attended CPAC and he interviewed some of CPAC's attendees and what he's going to share is some interviews and on top of that he's going to kind of give you his breakdown as to what the general consensus was at CPAC with regard to the big lie and it's not really the most surprising outcome but what he's going to say here is really really bad and depressing because it doesn't necessarily bode well for the long-term health of our democracy nonetheless We'll watch and then I'll discuss when we come back. It was very much uh, the Trump show here in town this weekend. We spoke to a lot of people, um, probably 20 or 30 people. Every single one of them, pretty much everybody, uh, believed that both the election was stolen uh, and also um, lies about the insurrection. I mean, it is quite sad when, you know, speaking to so many folks who have bought into this conspiracy theory about the election, which is now undermining their fate in American democracy. You know, so many folks told us as well that they might not even trust uh, the results of the next year's midterm elections. Uh, do, do you accept he lost the election? I accept that on paper things happened to make it appear that way. I'm, I, I don't know what would have happened. Right. I find it very questionable that he lost, given the support that he had. Do you think what happened on January 6th was a stain on Trump's presidency? Absolutely not, yeah. He didn't invoke any kind of violence. He didn't say anything that was making, that was all just just honestly ridiculous a few people acted out out of millions of people that attended or well, i wouldn't say millions but that was most close to a million yes i would i'm a trump supporter yeah yeah do you do you accept that he lost the election yeah he did lose the election but we believe i believe uh there are some discrepancies and those will be revealed at some point what are you hoping to hear from trump uh, that he is going to uh, regain his rightful seat as president. In 2024? No. When? As soon as the election is overturned for the election fraud. Do you guys think the election was fair? No. 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 They tried to tell us the Tarrant County election. We went blue for the first time since 1962. It's not called an insurrection to me. What about it was an insurrection? They stormed Where? the Capitol. Who? Who's Who? they? The Trump supporters, right? Bullshit. I mean, I'm sorry. Bullshit. You so, don't know who those people were. No, some Trump supporters were invited in. And there's video and yeah, there's I've audio that they like said, come time. on in. So a lot to unpack there, John. Um, you did hear from one woman who mentioned that Trump could come back before 2024. And we know that was a concern of uh, the Department of Justice last week, uh, who said, you know, this sort of talk, this fantasy that he could be reinstated uh, into office before 2024, somehow the, the election could be overturned, that there was concerns that that could provoke uh, further violence. Most people we spoke to, um, you know, at CPAC this weekend did not believe that this um, re reinstatement thing would actually work out most are focused on looking towards 2024 but john pretty much everybody we spoke to uh believed the election was stolen so that last line was bittersweet to me because i was beginning to think that there was really a large portion of people who actually believed the lie spread by lunatics like mike lindell that trump would be reinstated in august but thankfully that's like a small fraction of people there but still he says that pretty much everybody we spoke to believed the election was stolen that is really really bad and there's been polls that kind of um give us a little bit of insight into how prevalent belief in the big lie was and you'd hope that over time you know as the anger uh, over the election kind of dies down maybe they come to their senses and start to re-examine their beliefs and realize that they were duped by misinformation but no, they still believe in the big lie. And it's really, it's sad because Trump is such a narcissist who refused to accept that he lost. And rather than just like admitting it and owning up to it, he decided to throw democracy under a bus to save face. And that's, that's bad. Like the fact that these people no longer believe in democracy is a really really bad thing because in order for democracy to work people have to believe in it people have to believe that their votes are going to count and trump got millions of people to believe that their votes didn't count it was a sham election and that is 
really bad. I mean, that's not to say that there aren't issues with our democracy. I criticize our democracy. I criticize, you know, the fact that there's voter suppression. I criticize voter ID laws. I criticize our majoritarian first-past-the-post electoral system, which leads us to a two-party duopoly. I criticize the electoral college. But still, even if I have criticisms of our democracy, that doesn't mean that the project itself is, you know, trash and we should just give up on democracy. Democracy is always going to be an ongoing effort, right? You're always working to further consolidate democracy. And the minute you check out and you think that this project is no longer worthwhile, that's when everything kind of starts to become undone. And that's really sad. So let's get to some of the reactions here. So one person said, I find it very questionable that Trump lost given the support he had. Now, I feel like now I, don't, I would like to kind of like pick this woman's brain a little bit to see what she thinks. But I mean, the general belief, according to Donald Trump, and assuming she believes everything that Donald Trump says, is that Donald Trump was basically like treated more unfairly than any president in modern modern history. But at the same time, you know, even though he was treated so unfairly by the mainstream media and so many uh, political uh, bad actors, well, he was so loved that it's not even possible that he he could lose this election. So it's a bit of a contradiction. Trump is somehow a victim of hatred, but also the most loved person ever uh, at the same time. And I, I don't think they realize how contradictory that seems. But that's not necessarily the worst thing that was said here in these uh, in these interviews. Another person says he lost the election, but there are discrepancies that will be revealed at some point. Okay, don't really know what that means. One lady hopes Trump will, quote, regain his rightful seat as president, and uh, not in 2024, but in 2021. It's already bad enough that Donald Trump, who incited a literal insurrection on January 6th, is able to run for president again. I mean, he, along with a lot of other former presidents, should be behind bars for the rest of their lives for crimes against humanity. But the fact that he's even able to run again in and of itself is an issue. But this person thinks that he's going to be reinstated in August, I'm assuming, in 2021. It's just to be that batshit insane, to be that detached from reality is very, very dangerous. So the last couple said the election wasn't fair. And the last two ladies... um were probably the most deranged because they refused to believe what was right in front of them. They refused to accept that the people who stormed the Capitol were actually Trump supporters. I mean, maybe the MAGA hats and the Trump flags were the giveaway for me, but what else? Like, what's the ulterior theory here? I mean, of course, if you ask them, they'd probably say, well, look, it was uh, Antifa because we've heard that even by sitting lawmakers like Matt Gates. So, you know, I, I don't know what to say. This is going to be a really, really long project to rehabilitate these folks, to bring them back to reality. And it's not going to happen if you share a humanist report video, even though you should definitely do that. But it's not going to happen that way in reality. Um, this is going to be a project where you you have conversations with these individuals one on one and you build up trust, you build a relationship with them and you come at them. Uh, from a position of, of love and concern, and you try to convince them that their entire worldview that they were duped into believing because of Donald Trump is a complete fucking sham. I mean, it's it's hard, right? But it's not impossible. I mean, I once believed in fairy tales. I was I was raised as an evangelical Christian, and eventually I was educated and I came to my sense my senses. But I mean, the thing that's missing here is there has to be like some willingness deep within to want to believe in the truth. And I think right now, in the short term, there's going to be too much cognitive dissonance that these Trump supporters aren't going to want to fight past. But if you have a family member that is a victim of QAnon, and I do call it a victim of QAnon because this is basically a cult, you have your work cut out for you. I mean, I don't even know how to have conversations with folks in my family who are conservative because it's not even like our worldviews don't, align in any way, shape, or form, their perception of reality differs from mine. And I don't know how to reach people who are operating on an entirely different plane, who exist mentally in a different dimension, in an alternate universe. I don't even know where to begin. And, you know, after decades of psychological research, perhaps we'll have some some uh, answers as to how we deprogram people. But, you know, for the next couple of election cycles, we're going to have a lot of folks believe that Donald Trump is the rightful winner and that, you know, um, up is down and left is right. And 
It's just, it's exasperating to think about how hard it's going to be to deconvert people, but it's going to take time. And I don't think that everyone is too far gone. There's going to be some people who they're a lost cause and you might as well give up on them. Some people just, they're not going to have a change of heart, right? But there are a lot of people who we can reach. And I think it's important that we do try to reach these people, try to deconvert them, try to bring them back to reality. I do think it's important because, uh, you know, ultimately I am a humanist. I am an optimist to my core, even if that optimism has been shrouded in, in doomerism and, you know, sadness. But I do think it's worth a try, even if we fail.